So congratulations, you have finally created your very own custom .NET template. But when you try to get it to work properly, turns out it's not working. So what do you do? So on this final episode of our mini series on .NET templates, we're gonna learn how you can best troubleshoot and diagnose those issues. So come on down for this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and I'm joined again by senior PM, Syed Hashimi. Long time no see. Yeah, hello. I'm forever <laughs> since I've seen you. I know, it's been a whole like two minutes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so last time we discussed uh, creating the template and then adding parameters to it. And so now that we have that up and running, chances are if you did it, you being the audience member, it probably didn't work right the first time. So we're going to talk about ways to troubleshoot those issues, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, you know, we, we have kind of made the the process pretty kind of straightforward for creating templates, but, you know, there's still a lot of work that we need to do, you know, especially on kind of the kind of logging front when things went bad. So what I'll do is, you know, I'll kind of go through some things that, that um, template authors can use and some kind of pointers and what to avoid and and uh, what to check for certain cases and, and those sorts of things and then uh, kind of go from there. Yeah. Great. I'm actually very excited about this one because <laughs> who doesn't like troubleshoot tips? So. All right, let's go ahead and uh, dive right into it. So um, everything that we're going to kind of cover here is is kind of captured in the, the readme for my samples repository. And uh, another pointer to get to it is aka.ms slash netcore dash templates. All right. So uh, what I've done is, you know, I've created a kind of template analyzer tool here, and and I've got the command uh, for users for how to go ahead and get that one installed, and you know, I've already got that installed, and and this tool is actually open source too. So if anybody's interested in uh, taking a look at it, they can do that. So we'll talk about this tool, uh, how to use it. So let me let me open up my uh, let me open up my demo project here. That's got the template that we created in the last one. And then what we'll do is we'll make some kind of changes to this. Let's uh, let's just get rid of this um, get rid of the framework uh, symbol there. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then um, and then let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna just I'm gonna rebuild this uh, this package here uh, to show people what might happen here. So so I've got my reset templates command here and. And also, as kind of a reminder, there, you know, if you're interested in that reset template command, I've got a, a PowerShell file here that's got the definition of that, and uh, you can just drop that in your uh, PowerShell prompt and then call that function, or even put it in your PowerShell profile. It's up to you. So we're going to reset the templates, uh, create the NuGet package again, and then install it again. I'll restart Visual Studio at that same time too. All right, so now, so what I'll do is what I'm expecting here is uh, I should see my template, but when I get to the additional information page, uh, my my author name parameter is likely to not show up. Oh, it actually does show up here because we forgot the parameter here for framework. But in either case, it's still very important to add that framework parameter here so that way users know what framework they're getting here. All right. Let me go and uh, let's take a look at where we're at. Let me go into the content folder here. And now let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the the templates command here. So it's templates analyze dash h. So this will give us the uh, the help for this. So if you have a NuGet package, you can pass the 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 path to the NuGet package, or if you have a folder, you can just pass pass the path to the folder, and that's what we'll use here. So I'll say, you know, I want you to analyze uh, my console zero one. Um, okay, so now we're getting some um, some errors and warning, or essentially just warnings here. So we're saying, hey, there's no description, uh, and then you're also missing the the framework symbol. But let me go back into Visual Studio, and we will introduce uh, a couple additional errors here uh, to just kind of double check this guy as well. Let me go into my template.json file, and let's just say I kind of misspelled. Uh, one of these guys here, or two of these, two of these. So let's go back there and run our little template analyzer once again. All right, so we get the error that says, you know, source name is not found. And we talked about the source name last time, and that's a very kind of important 
Uh, that's a very important one because that's how all the replacements happen. So I'll fix that. And then uh, for my default name, you know, that's a warning saying, hey, default name wasn't found. You might want to consider adding that. Let's go ahead and add that. And then uh, let's go ahead and add our description here as well. So description, uh, demo, console, template. And it's uh, telling us about framework again. So let me go ahead and re-add the framework property there, the framework object there. It's going to save that. Let me run it one more time. All right, so no issues found. So now we're good to go. But uh, let me let me show you some other things that this will look for. So let's say if I didn't have my IDE.host.json file, it should warn me about that, saying there's no host nice. file found. Go ahead and do that. So those are some kind of things that it picks up on. And and uh, if there are any errors in the host file, it should pick up on those as well, I believe. Let's, let's rename that to something else. Try to run it one more time. Okay, so yeah, I guess it didn't pick up that one. So yeah, I still got some kind of work to do in this uh, little validator here, but uh, it should have checked for that. And maybe by the time that users uh, watch this video, I might have actually gone through and fixed that. All right, so now we've uh, we've pretty much fixed everything up here and we're good to go. So what we can do is just kind of go through that process one more time uh, of resetting the templates, creating the NuGet package, and then installing it again. All right. That's fine. So that analyzer seems very powerful. And the fact that it even exists at all, I bet could save a lot of people a lot of time and trial yeah. and error. Yeah, no, it is pretty cool. And, you know, even even I use it for my for my own kind of templates because, you know, sometimes I'll forget something uh, here or there. So, yeah, it's definitely pretty helpful. And uh, I've, I've also even discovered issues with uh, kind of built-in templates here. So that's really great. And in the in the README, it does kind of cover uh, what are all the different things that it, uh, that it looks for here. I forget where they're at. Oh, yeah, it's over here somewhere, like required. Uh, properties and stuff. So yeah, there there is some info here in the README as well for you know what is it that this tool is looking for. But uh, it does some additional things on top of this as well. All right, so we've got that going. So now what I wanted to do was why don't we talk about you know what could possibly go wrong here uh, during this process, right? So let's get rid of this. Let me reset the the templates. So now let me let me go ahead and explain you know what is reset templates doing here. So let me I will actually just go ahead and reinstall uh, the NuGet package. Oh, I'm I'm going to reinstall this um, this uh, this template here, and I'm going to show you where these things are going into. So with the template engine, there's a there's a cache here. So if I go to local app data. There's a cache that the template engine uses, or actually, no, it's in uh, it's in the users. I think it's just right in users folder here, actually. Yeah, so it's in the user directory dot template engine. So here we can see it's empty because I just reset my I called that reset templates, and it just deletes everything from here. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and install this. So now that I've installed it with dot net new, I can see I've got this dot net new CLI folder here. So whenever you install something with dot net new. They will appear, you know, as a subfolder uh, here. So it'll be under packages. So I can see I've got my sciademo.con01 NuGet package there. All right. So now let me go ahead and fire up Visual Visual Studio, and we'll keep an eye. We'll keep an eye on this folder as I uh, as I go in to create new project. So now we see a new folder appearing here that's named VS. And in here, you know, there'll be like some like long string of the name of Visual Studio or whatever. And then, and then it's essentially a copy of that folder structure there. So I can see packages here. <laughs> so one thing that could happen is, you know, let's say if you're developing your, let's say if you're developing your project templates locally and you're trying it in Visual Studio. So let's say during that process, if you know, let's say you made a change, but you're not seeing it in Visual Studio, odds are this file has not been updated. And this can happen for a number of different reasons, right? Like for example. Mm -hmm. If the if the name and version of the NuGet package are the same, you know, in a lot of cases it will believe that that file is up to date because a NuGet package is like, you know, it's supposed to be unmodifiable, right? So when I publish a NuGet package to NuGet.org, I shouldn't be able to modify that anymore. Uh, but that's an unfortunate artifact of of what we're seeing here because here, you know, I'm developing this locally, so obviously I'm going to be changing the contents of it. So we're kind of breaking that rule, right? So 
So that's why I have reset templates, right? So now let me close out of Visual Studio here, go back up. So now when I do when I do when I do reset templates, and we can actually just look at the what is it? Uh, we can just look at the let's go take a look at what reset templates does because it does a number of things here. Uh, sorry. So it does a number of things here. So basically what I do is I'll take a look at that template engine directory and just delete all the folders that are in it. That's one thing. And then after that, it calls .NET new dash dash debug reinit. So that's another way to, to send a command to .NET new that says, hey, get rid of all customizations and take me back to what the experience was when I installed it. So that's what it does. So so yeah, if you run into a problem where you know you're not seeing your changes in Visual Studio, you know odds are you didn't uh, you didn't call reset templates and and maybe that NuGet package is kind of sitting there somewhere that's been cached. So that's definitely a problem. Um, so we've got that, and then um, you know another you know another problem here is, and uh, and I think this is really kind of you know an artifact of of how .NET New works, but every Every kind of every kind of new version of the SDK, so let's say with .NET Core 3.1 versus .NET 5, right? So with those two different versions, uh, .NET New maintains a separate list of templates there. So let's say let's say for example, I've got .NET New 3.1 installed, and and I don't have anything else installed. When I do .NET New install, and I install a template, that's gonna that's gonna install it into the 3.1 hive, as we call it in the template engine world, right? So then let's say after that, after some time passes, you install .NET 5. Now the .NET 5 version is not gonna have those templates that you have installed with 3.1. So you have to reinstall those. So now one thing that could happen, let's say, <clears throat> let's say you're working on a template and you know you you create your template and you call that .NET new dash dash install. And then, and then you go to use it, and you're just not seeing it. So what could happen is, it could be controlled by global.json. So with global.json is a file that you can put into a folder. Maybe we can actually just demonstrate this real quick, actually. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to go into a different, um, let's see what folder am I in? OK, that's fine. So I will just go into a different, let me go up, <clears throat> up one. <clears throat> All right, if I do .NET version, <clears throat> I'm going to get this uh, 5.0 preview, right? Mm -hmm. Let me see what versions of the SDK I have installed here. Okay, so I just have these two versions, but I can I can demo with this. All right, so now with .NET new, I can actually create a global JSON file. So I can say .NET new global JSON, and I can do dash H to figure out what are the parameters there. So I can say... Uh, dash dash SDK dash version and I'll put this guy here. So now we saw when I ran when I ran the version command initially I got this this preview version of it right. So now if I add this, now I can see I've got that global JSON. If I re-execute that same exact command, I'm gonna get the 5.0.0. So let me install .NET new install All right, let me install this package here. Yeah, so now I can see I've got my Sayedha console one, right? So now if I go back, um, if I go back up, do .NET version, I'm back into the preview. So if I do .NET new dash L, you know, I'd never, never reset the, uh, the templates. Let me just reset the templates one more time and then we'll do it again. Go back into the demo to install it one more time. All right, so now I can see my Syed console one. This is with 5.0.0. Do it again. I do .NET new dash L. Uh, here I'm, I'm I'm expecting not to see that. So, so I don't see my Syed console, right? And mm -hmm. then if I was to do version here, we'll see that it's in the preview version. <clears throat> so this is a real big kind of gotcha here, basically. So when you install a package and then when you use it, it has to be in the same kind of SDK version 
of .NET New. So this, so so let's say you install a package and it's just not showing up. You know, make sure that wherever you install that package, that there is not a global.json file that's restricting uh, the SDK here. So that's kind of a big problem there. And uh, you know, this is this is something that I believe that the uh, the .NET New team will be addressing in the future. Uh, but yeah, this can definitely happen uh, to to template users, and and also you know one thing that could happen is, you know, let's say you've been using .NET Core 3.1 for a while, and you've got your templates installed, and and you update Visual Studio, and all of a sudden you don't see those templates. This is the reason why, so you have to reinstall those templates. So yeah, those are those are some kind of gotchas there. But uh, you know, I would definitely love for template authors to use that tool that I've created there. And uh, the way all the information for that tool is uh, is in that template sample repository. Um, so you just install it with .NET with this command here, and then you just use it, kind of how we showed it. So yeah, I'd love uh, love people to try that out, and and then give me you know additional pointers for how we can how we can further test these templates and uh, and additional kind of best practices there. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that definitely seems like some extremely useful stuff that would be absolute time savers for so many people. Yeah, the uh, the global JSON one, man, that one can be really frustrating, you know, because yeah. you know, if you don't know it, it's super hard to figure out. And then, you know, you could end up in a situation where, let's say you you, you clone it to a different computer and then it just works on the other computer and, mm -hmm. and not on this one, that could be very frustrating. And, you know, I know a few people who have kind of fallen into that pit, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't sound fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool, so what's up next? So next, I think, um, you know, I'm not really sure at this point what we can do next here. I think, um, I think, I think we've got a pretty good uh, set of videos here. So what, what I would actually be interested in is, you know, we 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 already kind of showed how to use .NET New. We showed how to create a basic template. We showed how to how to use that in Visual Studio itself, and we talked about some gotchas. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear from the uh, from the community. You know, what are some additional what are some additional videos that we can create around the templates, and then we can kind of add to this video series in the future, if that's all right. You know. Yeah, this this whole mini series I think has been really cool, and I hope anyone who's ever been interested in creating a template or just using a custom template takes advantage of the many easy to use tools and resources that are available for it. Yeah, so definitely. thank you so much, Syed, for sharing all that information. And definitely come back if you have more developments in the template space. Oh, for sure. Thank you very much. Sweet. So until next time, happy coding.